ultimatum for a referendum. President Torre gave the Spanish president a month to put forward a proposal for a vote on self-determination or face the collapse of his government. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The Parliament Plenary met today for the first time since the summer break, and one of its first decisions already prompted the opposition party to announce a lawsuit against the Speaker. This, as that very same building became yesterday night, the center of unprecedented protests. Stay with us to learn more about this, as well as the latest on exiled rapper Valtonic. The Catalan independence movement has been a peaceful one and demonstrations in general have stood out as festive and colorful. But for the first time yesterday on the anniversary of the October 1st referendum, things turned ugly in the streets, prompting a large political reaction. Thousands of people took to the streets on Monday to commemorate the anniversary of the October 1st referendum in Catalonia. Central Barcelona saw its streets flooded with peaceful demonstrators. But as night fell, tensions mounted, with some protesters reaching the gates of the Catalan Parliament. The committees for the defense of the Republic called off the march, but demonstrators stayed. And then the clashes with the Catalan police began. The opposition leader, Inés Arrimadas, had to be escorted out of the chamber, and protesters later broke through the police cordon around the building. In all, some 30 officers were injured, prompting police unions to criticize the Catalan government for lack of better planning. There were accusations that the head of the Catalan police rejected today, adding that those responsible for the violent acts were radical groups that until now had not been seen in the independence movement. Que són grups que no representen ni molt menys tot allò que nosaltres hem viscut com a país des de l'1 d'octubre. Meanwhile, unionist party leaders criticized the Catalan president for inviting protest groups to put pressure on his government and they accused him of inciting the violence. Criticism also came from the Spanish government. El senyor Torra, el president de la Generalitat, eh, té la màxima responsabilitat de garantir la seguretat de tots els catalans i catalanes i crec que es va equivocar quan va alentar precisament aquests moviments i aquesta sortida al carrer. Ahí... Pro-independence parties have repeatedly committed themselves to using only peaceful means and today they were especially vocal in condemning violence. Malauradament, la celebració d'aquell esclat de ciutadania i determinació es va veure malmès aquest cap de setmana i ahir per uns fets aïllats que no en són gens representatius i que confio que no es tornin a repetir. I és en aquest sentit que cal fer una autocrítica seriosa. Will the protests have any legal consequences? According to the public prosecutor, they could. She said today that once she receives the police reports, she will consider opening an investigation. Things in Catalan politics are anything but usual. Six elected MPs cannot attend debates and votes because they're either in prison or in exile. And today's MPs voted on a resolution to show their discomfort with a court decision that forces their suspension. On a day that Kim Torre also made it clear he became president to advance on the independence agenda. The Catalan president has stepped up the pressure on his Spanish counterpart, Pedro Sánchez. During a parliamentary speech, Kim Torra set a deadline for Sánchez to agree on an independence referendum or face the consequences. Si no hi ha aquesta proposta per exercir l'autodeterminació de manera pactada, vinculant i reconeguda internacionalment damunt de la taula abans de novembre, l'independentisme no podrà garantir cap mena d'estabilitat al Congrés dels Diputats al senyor Pedro Sánchez. Sánchez ousted Mariano Rajoy from power in the spring with a vote of no confidence that was backed by the pro-independence parties, among others. Without their support, the Spanish government will lose its majority in Congress. Torra will send a letter to Sánchez urging him to meet, as he warned, the pro-independence movement's patience is endless. The Catalan president made his comments during the opening of the annual three-day general policy debate. And this debate produced an image not seen since July. MPs entering the parliament for a plenary session. The reason for such a long gap? The pro-independence parties couldn't agree on how to respond to the suspension of some jailed and exiled MPs ordered by Spain's Supreme Court. So, the chamber speaker decided not to call any debate until the issue was sorted out, but set another deadline today. This morning, 
the Chamber voted against suspending the representatives, thanks to the votes of the independence parties and Catalonia en Comú, which is not aligned with either side of the independence issue. Però qualsevol persona d'aquest país que té ulls a la cara saben que són gent de pau, gent democràtica, gent que efectivament ha defensat els drets civils i polítics i que ha defensat la democràcia. I per defensar les urnes són a la presó. Yet, they also agreed that the MPs affected could appoint colleagues to represent them in the chamber, something that the far-left coup party opposed. This was seen by some unionist groups as a way to abide by the core ruling without making it explicit. None of the unionist parties took part in the vote, while Ciutadans is preparing a criminal lawsuit against some chamber members, including the speaker, Roger Torrent. Enganyats vostès i enganyant a la resta de la gent, perquè la realitat, quina serà? que estaran suspesos, com ja ho estan des que es va dictar aquella resolució. His predecessor, Carme Furcadell, is in pretrial jail for allowing debates and votes on the issue of independence. Can song lyrics be terrorism? This is what a court in Belgium will have to decide again after an appeal against a previous decision not to extradite a rapper to Spain for the contents of his songs. Baltonic was sentenced to three and a half years in prison in Spain for glorification of terrorism and slander against the crown. He left the country and sought refuge in Belgium. A court in Ghent rejected to extradite him last month, saying his is a case of freedom of speech. But his legal battle is still ongoing because Madrid doesn't give up. His lawyer, though, is optimistic and a new decision will be announced on the case on November 6th. And he reiterated his argument for the case. Glorifying terrorism is not a crime in Belgium, that there is no terrorism as such involved. So now for the first time even the prosecutor has admitted that uh, that part of uh, the sentence uh, in Spain is something that is not a crime in Belgium. The president of Lleida's regional authority, Joan Renier, was arrested on Tuesday morning in an anti-corruption operation. The Catalan police, the Mossos de Squadra, are investigating Reñe in relation to a kickbacks for contracts case involving Convergencia, the predecessor of pro-independence Pedecat Party, which is currently in government and governed Catalonia for decades. The so-called 3% case accuses the parties of influence peddling, bribery and money laundering. Unemployment in Catalonia fell in September for the first time in 11 years. It was a very slight decrease, only a 0.1% from August, but it's important because September is usually a bad month for employment as the end of summer means more people are out of work due to the end of seasonal jobs. There are now 380,000 people unemployed in Catalonia, with 5% fewer than in the same months last year. Moving on now, let's go to Brussels, where the Catalan government delegation has opened an exhibition about the October 1st referendum. The show includes pictures and press articles of the events from last year and allows visitors to learn more about this dramatic day in Catalonia's history. It's open on the street Rue de la Loi, right next to the European Commission and the European Council. And there you'll be able to see scenes from the more violent to the more emotional. There's even a ballot box. And with this, we finish today's show. We leave you, though, with some footage from a group of lovely turtles that were freed today in a lake. Enjoy, and see you tomorrow.